They're here. <laughs> All right, guys, we got Facebook Live back up. Hopefully, it okay, will work so much song. better this time, um, and it will. We will be able to move forward, guys. I know we haven't been on Periscope in a while. This seems I, I keep seeing some okay, on, some yeah. crazy comments jumping off Periscope. My block game is just like working today because I have no patience, no time for that foolishness. So, if you haven't been on MBG's Periscope page and you happen to come on with some um, foolishness, we will quickly block you. Um, and so we're going to wait for our... There you go, Shelly. Welcome back. We're going to wait for our um, Facebook Live um, families to come back on and we'll get back started. Um, we're just simply talking about prioritizing your spouse. We're coming out from the uh, one verse um, in Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. We're talking about prioritizing your spouse in marriage. And for those who may have joined us early on, we were talking about us having to step back a couple of weeks from MBG just to prioritize each other. And we asked the question, if you guys were facing, if, if you're out there and you're married or you're in a relationship and you've had to uh, manage, uh, what is I'm trying to say? manage prioritizing your spouse we just simply ask you to say yes you had you struggled with it or yes you had to um work around it or yes you had to prioritize because even in almost 11 years we've been married we've definitely had to um strategically try to prioritize each other because life um happens, happens. and we can get distracted easily now l let me ask if you're on if you can give me like a thumbs up or hey i'm here i can see you yes no i can hear you because I still see some people saying that um, they're not able to join, mm -hmm. but they can post. And I was just having that issue a minute ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hey, Miss um, Hemingway, excited about this convo on Watch With My Husband. Yay! We're excited that you and hubby are joining us on tonight. We are excited to be back. We had not been here in a while. But priorities are very important in marriage. A lot of times, um, people don't understand when they get married that um, your marriage, your spouse, comes first in your life second only to God, second only to your relationship with God. And so a lot of times people get married and they don't prioritize their, their spouse as second to God. They simply prioritize their spouse wherever they feel like they fit at the time. So whatever I got going on, wherever I deem um, may be necessary <laughs> for you at that time, that's where I stick you. And that's, that's a false way and a, a, a dangerous way to come into a marriage and to even handle a marriage. You have to be strategic about prioritizing your spouse you have to be intentional about it and you have to be committed to making them the priority well let's let's before we jump into that let's go hit some things that can cause uh the order to fall out of place even kids oh children really <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Look, guys, we have four boys. Don't get me wrong. I love my boys. Like, I love my boys. I gave birth to them all. I love them to heaven. But the thing is, they are very demanding on your life. They are demanding on your life. And so when you... um. Pretty much when you're married and you begin to have children, they begin to be taxing on your marriage. They begin to pull your time. And mm -hmm. if you're not strategic about how to now schedule time with each other as a married couple and as a couple, your children can easily become priority over yeah. your spouse. Yeah. Because, and see, I think it still just comes down to how you communicate about that. Because one thing, like, let's say you have a new baby. We all know you have a new baby. They're going to be technically priority because they need their needs met when they need their needs met. That's why they cry. They whine. You're going to have to pay them attention, but you can't have a 10, 14, 17 year old and they become priority over your spouse. That's true. You know, that's where the problem lies. And I think when people hear that your spouse should come before your children, a lot of people aren't comfortable with that because they don't understand that. One thing about it, when you love your spouse, you naturally will love your kids. Nobody's saying go over there and abuse your kids and, you know, neglect your kids that's not what that mm -hmm. is about people have to understand that in order to keep the family intact you have to keep the marriage intact well let me jump in i think one of the mm -hmm. issues is one of the issues and i see this a lot especially not to jump on the women but mm -hmm. i see this a lot especially with women mm -hmm. um here you go y'all <laughs> <laughs> no we back no he back but I, think, I think one of the problem is and i see this a lot mm -hmm. women when they have a child mm -hmm. 
their child begins to be their heartbeat. Oh my God. They, they child. so cute and cuddly and everything. And mm -hmm. we've been waiting nine months to see them. Then you see them, then they like your world. And it's like, uh, hubby, what? But the thing is, that's how your husband should be. Yes. That's how you should be about your husband. Mm -hmm. That's what we call unconditional love. Yeah. When somebody keep calling your name, keep calling your name, getting <laughs> on your nerve. And guess what? You still love that person. <laughs> when that person, you know, mess up your clothes or mess up, the, you still love that person. Mm -hmm. When you go through something mm. with your child, it could be sickness. You don't mm -hmm. get no sleep. Mm. You still love that person. Mm -hmm. But let your spouse do one bad thing. <laughs> it's a problem. It's but so now hard this to child, forgive. this little creature, which is a <laughs> blessing, <laughs> which is a blessing, uh, slash hater. Oh my God. Come into your life. They disrupt your, you know, disrupt your sleep habits. Mm -hmm. They do. They Kim put, said, yes, Lord. <laughs> they take away your sex life. Yes. Because there's no more intimate time. Uh, and especially if the spouse is breastfeeding. Yes. Because the breast no longer belongs, belongs to, to the you. husband. Exactly. Even though God gave you two. <laughs> you all just, people nurse on both, uh, both breasts. No, we got to share. No. See what I'm saying, guys? See, no, but you're prioritizing. Are. What is this about? Yes. That's what I'm talking about. But that is very true, love. And I and I and I think that's we were talking about things for guys. When you guys just joined us, we're talking about where your treasure, where is your treasure prioritizing your spouse? And we're talking about different things that can Hold begin on, what was that to take. Topic? Where your treasure? Where is your treasure? Where is your treasure? Mm -hmm. That's the question. Where is your treasure? So, husband, turn to your wife and look your wife in the eyes and say, "Where is your treasure?" <laughs> And if you know what her treasure is, you go touch that treasure. <laughs> really, babe? Oh, my God. Hey, 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 fam. That's jumping on. If you're jumping on with us, go ahead and share it. Um, and Tom said, man, I swear my 10 month old know when he, we about to have sex. He has an internal. Let me cry and mess up. They move. That's cry. what I told you. Look, this yes, is what I'm saying. Yes, yes. This exactly is what I'm talking about. <laughs> and it's like, it's natural. You know, right when you about to get to that point, they start crying. Ooh, yes, and cat. The issue is that I have with women, it's okay for the baby to cry. Oh, my God. If you have a child and <laughs> your child start crying right when you about to get to that intimate <laughs> moment, I promise you that baby will not die <sighs> if you let them cry for me. They will not. Ashanta, uh, can you guys minister to the babies too? RJ is watching. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so, babies, if you're out there and you're hating on your parents' intimate life, please don't do that. They don't understand that. If your baby is one month, two months, we got their language too. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't finna act like no baby right <laughs> No, but it is so true because <laughs> one thing about it, that I, I think that's very real what you say. And I think it changes when you're a new mom versus uh, maybe this is your second or third child. Because typically with new moms, this is your first baby. You don't want to hear them cry. You're like, okay, you can wait for a little sex right now. My priority is going to be getting this baby to stop crying. Now, let me ask you this. And I can get back Have to you. Have you guys ever heard a wolf cry? That's how men be on the other side of being. When the wife go, when the wife go and run to get to the baby, we over there like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's I how we be in the inside. I can't, no. guys. I just... That's how most men be in the inside. We may not say it. We'll turn our back. But it's it's sad, man. We be hurting. We be oh, crying too. Wolf cry. Ooh, now yeah. why 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 when we cry, oh, my God. we don't get no breath in our mouth. <laughs> You know, when we crying out for something, we don't get our blessing right away. But as you soon guys, as the babies have no control, but we are over talking what they about need. prioritizing. We what are. do you put first? We are, we are, and I think at that matter of fact, hold on, I feel like crying now. <laughs> now nah, I did joke, but uh, <laughs> but no, but that, that 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 was one of the biggest issues. It and, had, yeah. I mean, this thing can really shake up a marriage. Yeah, it can. It can really shake up a marriage. Mm -hmm. That's why when you're not married and you have these issues, the guy leave. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, you got to find balance. You got to find balance. You got to find balance. Kids are one of those things that can definitely be taxing on priorities in a marriage, and you can easily find the mm -hmm. baby taking up all your time, all yeah. your energy, and and typically um, for a lot of... <laughs> some of that's what happened when you had your... Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think it's an adjustment piece, and if people understand that it's an adjustment period, that it should be a temporary thing, that right now, the baby is going to demand a lot of our time, and we got to figure out how to work around the is, baby. But that is hard, mm -hmm. because just because that baby there, that don't stop my hormones. Yeah. 
Very true. Very true. Very it's true. not the woman hormone. Yeah, very true. I mean, because you got somebody on you all the time. They on you sucking your breast. They they pooping. You cuddling See, but that's with them. The you holding them. See, but this I is mean, the problem with prioritizing right here. This is the problem that I'm talking about. What's the problem? Now, this baby can be on you sucking your breast all the time for nine months. Mm -hmm. But I can't even get three days out the week. That is not true. I'm just saying, but typically what, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that women, after they've had a baby and they've been dealing with the baby all day and somebody's on you all day, you typically just don't want to be touched. You don't want, okay, let me just breathe. Let me go take me a bath. Just be clear of this little person on me. Let me just have some space. And that's then your why. husband comes home because he loves you and he's like, hey, babe, I love you. They want to cuddle. They want to do this. And that's awesome. And we don't mean to come off, you know, um, that way but at the same time it's like you got to understand both sides and i think you got to be flex that's that's what being flexible and we're going to talk about how to prioritize yeah. later on but it's definitely a balance yes and and, and, and miss j just said especially if you work too so imagine okay. i know i was and a working mom and I, and i'm, I'm a working agree. mom now i agree with who it is kimberly uh-huh ladies lay on your side lay to the side <laughs> kimberly lay My to the sister. side <laughs> Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Lay to the with side. kids, husband, and a family. Yes, yes. And I think I think husbands and wives both have a lot to deal with. And if you are a working mom, that definitely creates more stress um, to mothers, like trying to balance all those things with new kids. And even if you have older kids, a lot of those now, our oldest son, he's 14, he's getting ready to go to high school. He wants to play football. So now we got this whole extreme football schedule we got to try to work around on top of everything else. And so it's not just newborn kids, kids in the middle, kids older, college kids. Well, let, me, let me tell you where balance come in at. Mm -hmm. Now, when you do have the newborn, and the baby is crying or the baby in the other room, mm -hmm. you can simply lay the baby on the bed, mm -hmm. go to the hallway, mm -hmm. get you a quick one. Yeah. Go to the restroom, leave the door open. Mm -hmm. You can still have that baby crying. Mm -hmm. Get you a quick one. But what happens is women... You said that kind of forceful. But what happens? What happens is women, they don't do that. <laughs> we do. They want to use every excuse. Now she crying, the baby crying. <laughs> Hold on, wait. I'm, I'm... And this is the worst <laughs> one. I got you. I got you. Right, let me let me take you. There. I got you. But then what happened? The baby started at night to cry even more. <laughs> and now the baby got stomach pain. Now, I'm like, now they just won't go to sleep. Yes, Shalita, we have four kids. But it's not just it's not just even balancing sex when you have kids. It's balancing everything. It's balancing time, time yeah. dating, just communicating, just mm -hmm. having the time to sit down and have a conversation with your spouse. Like you know, uh, even our days are very hectic, and we try to talk throughout the day. And even when we come home, the kids are now saying this, this, this. I'm trying to cook. We're trying to do this. We got other stuff. And then we try to have a moment to talk together. And so it's just really balancing anything, having time yeah. for anything, and trying to prioritize each other. So kids can be something that can take your spouse out of their priority um, hierarchy. And what else? Yep. Oh, the pursuit of success. Yeah, that's that's a lot for a lot of people. Guys, you know, um, I don't know if you guys have been following some of the story, but um, I think it was, uh, what's his name? Um, T.I. I thought it was interesting that he said as part of him and his wife splitting up that his priority he just as a he, as a husband he didn't he 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 didn't have the um what it took to prioritize his marriage mm -hmm. that he was focused on his career yeah. like he had a bigger to him his bigger calling was doing mm -hmm. his career mm -hmm. and i just thought that was amazing because now he's married and so actually your biggest calling after your relationship with god is your wife and maintaining yeah. that and Mm -hmm. and, and I don't mean to cut you off, mm -hmm. I don't mean to jump in there, but I think this is going to be very interesting because what I find is the the career part is very important. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not, I'm 50-50 with what T.I. was saying because I truly... Yes, Miss Mary, he said it was a distraction. Absolutely, was that's distraction. insane. But, but the thing is, if you want to stay married mm -hmm. we got, and you want to stay in this nice house... Mm -hmm. I got to get out here and and, and grind yeah. and get in this career yeah. and make things happen. Absolutely. Now, it goes back to finding balance. Absolutely. Because in his situation, you got the type of money where you can fly her out to where you at. Exactly. Instead of flying the side chicks. Instead but that's another story. <laughs> Okay. No, but yeah. in all honesty, you do. Success, like you said, is, is is an important thing. And we all come to this world with 
purpose. And so when we all come with purpose, we all want to find that purpose. We all want to pursue that purpose. But I tell people all the time, when you have a relationship and a marriage that is grounded on God, God will, your purpose should never pull you from your marriage. That's something people got. If your purpose begins to pull you from your marriage, that's your purpose. It's not God's purpose. And I think that's the difference that people don't never put together. Like God's purpose will always still solidify your marriage as you guys do it. But your purpose will definitely pull you away from your marriage because it's what you want to do. So well, you will be selfish in it. Yeah. You won't sacrifice in it. You won't compromise in it. Well, that goes back to if the person even loved you from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Because maybe it just might be a cop out for me to get away from you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see? Mm-hmm. And so that can be an issue within itself. Yeah. Because if you're not supporting the purpose mm-hmm. that I feel that God is leading me to, mm-hmm. I'm going to do me. Yeah. And so what happens is the prioritizing becomes an issue now because mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. I'm just going to go do what, you know, I feel like I was called to do. Mm-hmm. And if you don't want to ride with that, mm-hmm. I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. Now, what was the sole purpose for a woman? To be a helpmate. To be a helpmate. Meaning that I have a mission, I have a plan, mm-hmm. and you're going to fill in to help me mm-hmm. to get to where God is leading me. Mm-hmm. Now, and I'm not saying that you also don't have a purpose for mm-hmm. your life mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. But now we have to have fine balance to whereby who going to pursue first? Yeah, we got to have a marital purpose, a vision together. Vision together. Yeah. And that's why it's very important that you guys write out a vision plan yep. to see how we're going to do this. Yep. If you're going to sacrifice the first two years to do what you're going to do, I'm going to support you after that. Then we're going to do what I want to do or what I'm called to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then you can support me on that. Yeah. Gives you a vision. It also gives you provision. It will align with right. Absolutely. Absolutely, Nicole. And mm-hmm. I think that's just one of the things I think when people pursue success and it's more about them reaching a goal than it is about the you, the family or it is about the marriage, you can easily become distracted yeah, and your spouse is no longer a priority. My goal can be... To go into my career to mm-hmm. bring the family up to a better place. Mm-hmm. So I think with men, it's so hard for us to balance because our our goal, or our main focus, or our lens, our eyes be set on trying to provide for the family. Mm-hmm. And when we don't provide for the family, we get looked at mm-hmm. as the problem. Mm-hmm. We are the issue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Right now, I'm supporting and helping my husband cultivate his goal, but his growth allows us to grow. Absolutely. And I think... I think what you what just that? said, um, I, it went by so fast, but she said she's cultivating uh, and helping her husband reach his goal. And then that, that, in essence, makes them grow together. And I think that's simply what you said. Yeah, at the, at the end of things, when you come together and we have a vision, a lot of people get married and they never sit down and talk about where we're going to go. Mm-hmm. Like, And so if we get married, like we tell people all the time, we have a lot of stuff going on. So right now... Ronald has uh, another business he launched. He had a business before this business, and I supported that business. And he had a business he kind of launched last year and kicked off, and it's taken off this year. And I also have a business that I launched, and it's taken off. And we practice supporting each other, so we balance. We, we still have four kids to raise. And so when it gets demanding on his side, I have to scale back on my side and still focus on the family. When it's not, and I need to catch up. Then he focuses on the family and we have to balance because we know that both of us are trying to reach a goal for the family financially and even career wise things that we're passionate about, things that we want to do. So Mm -hmm. we support each other. But the moment that those things become more important than our relationship, something's going to have to go. And it ain't going to be the marriage. like. And so people got to be willing to say, my marriage is more important to me than this goal or what I'm trying to reach. And a lot of times people don't sit down and talk and they don't get on one accord. And so if you're in a marriage and you're just out there doing something and your spouse knows nothing about what you're doing, nothing about what you're building, you're not communicating that process to them, of course they're not going to be supportive. Well, it's like thing, you're doing it by yourself. Well, the thing is, I think this has to be talked about from the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. Because if we talk about this from the beginning, mm-hmm. if I lay down to you, okay, this year, this is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And you say, okay, do that. Yeah. And I begin to do that. And then you come back and you renege. And then you have an issue with what I'm trying to do because I'm trying to provide for the family and take the family to a better place. Mm-hmm. And it's your issue with that. Then that go the problem. Mm-hmm. Because we as men, we feel like it's our job to provide. Uh So no matter what, we have to get to that goal. We have to get to that destination. 
we need you guys to help, mm-hmm. support, yep, and be the helpmate. Yeah. In the situation. Yeah. This doesn't make you weak, mm-hmm. but let me get us to this place, and then I can allow you, or I can put us in a better place for you to do what you have to do. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Or if it's better, it can go both ways. Mm-hmm. Now, if it's better, if the timing is better for you to go into your situation to do what you have to do, then yeah. that's fine. I'm gonna support you. Yeah. But it all come down to communication and support your spouse. So I saw this quote that said, your priorities aren't what you say they are. They are revealed by how you oh, live. Oh, Catherine, it went off on Periscope. So Maybe it, it says, oh uh, yeah, it might have just went off. So it says, um, your priorities aren't what you say they are. They are revealed by how you live. And that's such a true statement. Action. A lot of times, yeah, it just simply comes down to Action. actions. A lot of times people say, especially when dating, that um, you're a priority, but then you see that you're not. It's something to pay attention to. Anytime that you're truly a priority, actions will line up. And in order to prioritize anything, you got to sacrifice something. Mm -hmm. That's That's just period. So our question is, have you laid your spouse on the altar of success, fame, fortune, ministry, children, material possessions, religion, education, power, wealth, a sense of importance, church, family, or friends? Now, this is the problem with a lot of Christians and a lot of believers. We like to think that we can do everything that has to do with God and neglect our spouse. So not true. And that is not God's intention at all. Hey, cutie pie, that is not his intention. A lot of times you see people go hard in ministry, go hard in the church, and then you go home and you don't go hard at all. Like, you don't even put in any work for your marriage. And that is not the intention of God to put things in place that come before your marriage. Your relationship with him, absolutely, you work for that. But the moment that you can go and give so much time to a religion, to a church, to a ministry, and give no time to your spouse, then your priorities are out of place. And somebody in the church should be checking you about your priorities. A lot of times we don't want to hear that. We want to justify it by saying, well, I'm doing doing God's work. I'm out here doing this for the Lord, you know, and and we think it's okay. And that's not okay. If you are married, your spouse is a priority. Absolutely. Dr. Cook, it is out of order. And a lot of times we just operate out of order all the time in the church and nobody ever calls it out for what it is. And that's how we can get to these percentages of divorce that we're seeing in the church now, because so many of us think we're doing marriage the right way, but we're not. We're simply doing marriage the world's way with God's word on it. So we think. That's what we do. No, I think, And I think a lot of people get the, the uh, scripture mixed up when they mm-hmm. say uh, to love your husband as Christ loved the church. Mm-hmm. See, Christ loved the church. Mm-hmm. That's his wife. Yeah. He don't want you to be all in his wife. He, that's why you got your own. Exactly. You need to pay attention to your own Wife. Exactly. That's why I say you are the pastor, you are the minister of your own house. Exactly. So you are the God of your situation. You are the God. You are your wife's savior. Mm-hmm. You are your wife healer. Mm-hmm. You are your wife protector. Mm-hmm. You are the God of your house. Mm-hmm. See, I have, see, I can lay hands on her right now mm-hmm. to heal her. Man. No, I ain't talking about <laughs> nothing like that. No, no, really. Yes. When my wife is sick, I can lay hands on her. Absolutely. You do it quite often. That's right, I do. I don't play no game. <laughs> Could you focus like No, but, but going back to what I said, saying, don't do it. <laughs> but going back to what I was saying, but you do have to be the God of your house. And I think that's where a lot of people lose track mm-hmm. of not being the leader of their house or not being the protector or not being the lead man of their house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the but the word of God also says like before you come and you take any position in a church, you gotta have your house in order. You have to have your you gotta be able to run your house. And that means running your house means that you have your your spouse feels like a priority. Your spouse feels mm-hmm. loved, your spouse feels protected, your spouse feels covered, your spouse feels led before you go and you go and do out you go and do any ministry and outside of the home. Everything that you named was all the characteristics of Christ. Absolutely. He loved he led, he died. Mm-hmm. You know, he he did all he those things. Yep. He sacrificed. That's that what I was getting to. Mm-hmm. He sacrificed, and you got to be willing to sacrifice. You got to be willing to put, you know, your spouse first. Yeah. He put the church first. Mm-hmm. That's why he died for the church. Mm-hmm. You got to be willing to put your spouse first. Yeah. So we ask, where's your treasure? When you tre- treasure your marriage, you prioritize your marriage. And it's just not marriage. If you're in a relationship or you're engaged, if you treasure your fiance. No, nah, nah. you're in you a treasure- relationship. Don't be, no. Nah. You put God first. 
And, and any one you put God for, I'm just saying, yeah, I'm just babe, saying. but still, you will, I, no, you're not going to be out here dating nobody who don't make you a priority. That's not going to make me want to be your fiance, and it's definitely not going to make me be your wife. You have to show priority in I, dating. Okay. okay, I guess if you put it that way. Yeah, you have to show priority in dating. I mean, I talk to so many of my girlfriends that are single, and that's a big piece of their frustration. Like, they feel like they're not a priority. And so if you're neglecting me before I ever become your wife or your fiance, how can I put this new expectation on you when you showed me what you were from the jump. Like, that's unrealistic. So are you showing me these same qualities? Are you absolutely, putting me first? Absolutely, absolutely. It goes both ways. I'm not just saying or for a man. Are you listening to Beyonce? You know what I'm saying? To the left, to the left. Don't do be like that. Being, you know, <laughs> take a lemon, make a lemonade, you know. The, uh, the the lemonade tour. Yes, Michael said neglecting your spouse is neglecting self as both of you are one. Absolutely. That's in marriage, true. it absolutely is. We always say, you can't win alone in marriage. There's no way to do that. You're no. either going to win together, you're going to lose together. But a lot of people like to put that line of division in place and think that they're winning when in essence, if one person wins, the other loses because you are one. Yep. And so, but yeah, in, 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 in anything, in dating especially, pay attention to if you're a priority to somebody that you're interested in going further in a relationship with if they're not making you a priority don't waste your time like anything that you treasure you spend time yeah, with good, you put yeah. effort in you, put you take down, care yeah. of you protect you just you know i don't have diamond earrings and i'm throwing them around like my cubic zirconians that i just paid like two dollars for no i'm gonna make sure i know where my earrings are i'm gonna put them back in a box i'm gonna put them in a nice place so i'm gonna make sure i take care of them now the other ones they don't mean that much to me they're not that valuable to me so i can go get another one quick and easy so you saying if your your boy friend buy you a ring you should treasure that you should take care of that this man went back like no i'm asking that's like so babe, that's like 15 years ago i did treasure it somebody stole it you. yes you are you're talking, talking about, about 15, the scope. You're talking no, 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 15 no. years ago stuff we're it was talking stolen. about this so we're talking about this in the scope. You we're should cherish it. Know. Yes, you should cherish it. <laughs> I clearly, cherished it. Clearly, I cherished you did it. Not. It was stolen. Clearly, I cherished it. I cherished it. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't I bought, buy that. I bought her oh, a promise ring. I oh, bought her God. a promise ring. Yeah, I listened and to Ron's story. Clearly, I should have kept my promise. I shouldn't even kept my promise because she lost the ring. <laughs> you said you shouldn't have kept your promise because I lost the ring. Then she told me somebody stole it. Somebody Guys, I was in college in a dorm no, room. Watch it this, was stolen. Watch this, y'all. Now she had eight eight rings, but somebody just stole the one I bought her. The other rings were like fake gold rings. They weren't even your ring was a real ring. Yes, they stole your ring. That's that doesn't need to hear that. I, I, I like I did. Shame on me. You absolutely right. I, I value the ring, but somebody stole it. So somebody said, uh, da, 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 da. Miss Hemingway said, please tell my husband he has to make me feel the same way he did when we were dating. Am I right? Go love. I let you touch that one. Should question? he make her feel the same way she felt when they were dating? Yeah. It is very important that you go back to that place. That mm. place right there will keep you. In love, that place will keep you married mm -hmm. over time. And I think you, the, the crazy, I'm glad you brought it up. The crazy thing is it is so easy for most men to lose that moment. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to just keep back going back to that moment. But yes, it is very important that he take you back to where, you know, you guys first met. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to look at him mm -hmm. and have that same desire wanting to be with him. Yeah. And he should make you feel that way. Yeah. I you know that feeling that you get when... Yeah, you know, I, this is the thing. I think, I think in, um, definitely in marriage and dating, it, it, it's very different. Just the newness of anything is a different level. Yeah. And so I think you got to understand when you get married, you have to find a new newness. I know that's kind of crazy, but you have to find a new way of to bringing that excitement, that, that connection. That night and that fight. Yeah, because yeah. for me, like, definitely he should still do the things that, that make you happy, the dating, the exciting, that can get you back to that exciting place. But that little butterfly exciting period, that goes and comes. Now, like, are you willing... Because maybe he have been trying to take you to that place, mm. but you're not willing to go. Mm. That's could be another thing too. Mm -hmm. That could be, you know, he may have tried to do some uh, new things, and you're like, no, I mean, I don't, that ain't what I want. Mm. So going back to communication, you have to communicate with your spouse. Yeah. Your spouse had to know and understand what you want, what you like, yeah. what moves you, what mm -hmm. drives you, what slows you down, what stops you and makes you get out mm -hmm. of the car. Mm -hmm. 
So it's going to be very important that you communicate that. Because yeah. some people, you know, just touching you on the shoulder may be something new to you. Mm-hmm. Rubbing you on the back. Mm-hmm. Kissing you on the top of your head. Mm-hmm. That may be something new that, you know, can spark that situation. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think one thing, like you just said, knowing what they want, because a lot of times we give what we think they they want and not really what they want. And so sometimes I've even been guilty of this, that I want something a certain way. I, I expect in my mind, I visualize this whole incident Most going. Women, they're just not you. I visualize this whole situation going the way it went in my head and then Ronald comes and it goes left and I'm like, dude, that's not really what I wanted though. And then he's like, well, you kind of like ungrateful then he gets in his feelings like, okay, then we got to sit down and talk about it because now he don't want to do it again. And I'm like, no, 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 I liked it, but that ain't what I had in my head. And so I think you just... It goes to communication. Like for women, we, 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 we're verbal and we talk. And so I'll lay out a whole plan. You don't got to do it tomorrow, but I'll lay out a whole plan of excitement. What's exciting me, what a date night would, that would blow my mind would be. And hopefully down the line, I get to see it. Like, well, the, well, the thing is, one of the things I want to warn most women about, mm-hmm. you know, you got to stay away from the romantic movies. You got to stay away from the, uh, very true. The, the, uh, uh reality shows. Very because true. This is real life. Very true. This is Reality life. shows ain't reality. <laughs> exactly. You know, after that, say cut, all that stuff is over. Mm-hmm. When you see yeah. a romantic movie, this is somebody thought that is well thought out and been put into play. Mm-hmm. Yes, I would love to buy a $2 billion yacht and, you know, send you on it naked and I'll be on the, you know, <laughs> backside of the uh, island, you know, standing on the water like Jesus or something. I would love to do that. That would be nice. Standing on the water like Jesus. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> but the thing is, we look at these shows, we look at the movies, mm-hmm. the nice movies. Mm-hmm. See, that's what I want. Why you can't do nothing like that? Yeah. Because you won't allow me to go get the money like uh, Denzel got. That's oh. the reason why. You won't allow me to do the things that his wife or that's going All on right in this now. movie to All do. right now. But then you want this life. Then you want to have this whole romantic scene laid mm. out. If you won't let me go out and make a few dollars, I, I can't buy roll pedals. <laughs> Those things are $16.99. <laughs> Or, this this is a good one. This is a perfect one. Now, this is the good one. I seen a movie. The woman walked in the house, and the guy had to have at least 65 dozen rolls of flowers. He had dozen <laughs> rolls of flowers. And my, my wife was like, oh, that is so nice. That is so sweet. But then, so I started calculating. I counted at least 40 dozens of roses. Mm-hmm. And you do 40 times, what, twenty nine ninety nine? You'll do the math. Yeah. That's a few thousand dollars. Yeah. But yeah. you want that, right? Jay said, you better get the fake ones. <laughs> oh, get them uh, out then, the yard. Uh, yes. But then, but then, oh, so you going to try me like a thot? You going to get <laughs> fake flour from the dollar store? Don't play with me. Oh, so that's all I'm worth, fake flowers. I'm, I'm worth the fake flowers. Like, you absolutely right. We would do that. Come you, on, you man. You right. dollar <laughs> tree. <laughs> No, because it, it, it's very true. I think I think that in every marriage, every relationship, you have to assess the level at which somebody can show you um, that they're prioritizing you or That's that right. somebody That's can right, spoil you. And so if we're here on a middle class level, I can't expect you to be balling out like we millionaires. Like, I can't expect for you to go do the things that Jay-Z can do for me. Yeah, I can't now expect she, that. Now, you see the woman on the move with the red bottom. You're like, mm-hmm. see, that what I want. Why you can't bring me no red bottom? Mm-hmm. Okay, baby, I got you the one from Marshall for $39.99. They, 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 they good. red. They like burgundy. Yeah, they burgundy bottom. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> but no, but guess what? Let me tell you what. This how this, and see, this how men play it in their mind. Mm-hmm. Okay, true enough. I can't buy the red bottom right now. But look, let me go stop at Nine West. Let me get bathed some, get bathed some shoes. These some nice ones. Mm-hmm. You get the shoes. Oh, they, they, they cute. <laughs> they ain't nice. <laughs> That's it. Now the woman in the movie, she got the red bottom and went ballistic. <laughs> You know, but you didn't see what that man had to do to get them red bottles. Uh, you didn't see what he, she allowed him to do. Yes. You know, it was night that he didn't come home. Yeah. You got them red bottles. Yeah. Yeah. So come on, man. Stay away from the reality reality, uh, reality shows, love and hip hop, something in Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, basketball. <laughs> New <Whatever>. York Knicks. <laughs> <and then. laughs> 
Whatever that no, is, No, it comes down to, and I think what a lot of people say is very true, it just comes down to making the effort. I think when you communicate with your spouse and you let them know things that will be pleasing to you and they make the effort to do that, even if they can't do it to the level that you uh, requested it or desired it, the fact that they're putting in the effort that their actions are lining up with trying to do what is pleasing, with trying to do what is prioritizing. Okay, too. before you jump to this, let me, mm-hmm. let me flip the script. I didn't mean to cut you off. Let me flip the script. Now, that was in the perfect world of a woman. Now, in every man who is watching or every man that is listening oh now, God, let me give y'all left our field, paper world. Left field. We come home, you naked. I want you, you know, you come and get this. That's in a man perfect world. When I get home, you see these right here, these for you. Get them. That's oh, in our Lord, perfect help world. Help them guys, help them guys. When I come to the house, <laughs> I don't have the big ass. Yes, Jay, nothing. here we go. <laughs> No, I'm giving you, most men, husband, you don't have to say nothing. You don't have to give me no likes, no hearts, no thumbs up, power to you people. You getting it. You don't have to get none of that. All I want you to do is just sit and listen. Don't even, just look straight at the screen. Don't even look at your wife. Don't even do none of that. Just be like, I, yeah. See, but that's what we see in our perfect mm-hmm. world. When we come home, mm-hmm. we shouldn't have to. I mean, I, <laughs> We don't mind doing the nice things. We love you guys. We would do anything for you guys. Mm-hmm. We love you guys, you know, to, from the bottom of our heart. Mm-hmm. But one, you know, in our perfect world, we shouldn't have to spend no money. We shouldn't have to, you know, you know, keep asking. Mm. You know, we should eliminate the headaches, mm. the back pains, mm. the uh, the bottom of your ear, where that part <laughs> that bottom hurt. Of your ear. I mean, what all that got to do? <laughs> What's below sea level? That's all I'm saying. Now, what we're going to do here, man, we're going to get back. Gonna... Oh, Rob said so you're trying to get y'all in trouble. Yes, Rob. He's definitely trying to get y'all in trouble. No, but I think, like you just but said, it's perfect very, world. yeah, in our perfect, it's very different. And I think at the end of it, I think in a marriage, you just want to feel like priority. You want to feel like nothing threatens your place in your spouse's yeah. life. You want to feel like you, that anything that does threaten how you feel or your position in your marriage, that yeah. your spouse is willing to sacrifice that thing or scale back from that thing so it does not become damaging to your marriage. In essence, that's what all of us want in a marriage. <laughs> um, someone at the bottom there. Exactly. So, Sometimes when spouses say they can't do something for the other spouse, it is not that they can't. It just isn't a high priority. And one thing about it, guys, I see so many people feel like they can't call their spouses out when they feel like they're not being priority. You have every right to call your spouse out when you feel like you're not being prioritized in your marriage. It is it is definitely... But you have to be tactful. You, you have, have to be tactful, be tactful, tactful about in it. Thing, yeah. Because yeah. I can recall a situation where... Uh, this dude has been like six months, eight months. Mm. And I actually called her out on something. You trying to say I kind of got an answer back? I think no, I no, you, it very no, you, well. No, you did. Oh, okay. You did. Okay. Now, at the time, she felt some kind of way when I called <laughs> her out. But I held my tongue. You did. You did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, when I called her out about it, man, I mean, she, she, she went, you know, she was cool about it. Uh-huh. But she felt some type of way about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And that's cool. Criticism is hard. It's hard. Mm-hmm. But you accept it. Because the thing is, when somebody call you about, cr- criticize you about something, it's okay. You're going to feel some type of way. Yeah. But you don't go try to fight fire with fire. Get on the defense. Mm-hmm. Listen to what the person is telling you. Mm-hmm. Because if I'm coming at you, telling you about something, or yeah, telling you that I feel a certain way about something, those are my feelings. Absolutely. Despite of how you may feel about it, this is how I feel. Yeah. And so when I told her about it, she felt some kind of way. But boy, oh boy, that week after... Anyway, oh, no, God, that, and God did convict yeah. me on that true. after you spoke to me. You know, I did. I had my conversation with God. And he was like, yeah, you. he's not your priority. Mm-hmm. And, and, and in essence, that's simply what you said. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, I, and I think a lot of times, like we talked earlier, there's so much that can happen in our lives, being adults, raising kids, raising families, and working, that can take you away from being priority in yeah, your marriage, from your true. spouse being priority. And so you got to be willing to sit back and listen to yourself say, hey, that's I'm feeling like Bi- I'm not priority in your life. the Bible say... Slow to speak, quick to listen, mm-hmm. and slow to anger. Mm-hmm. That right there alone, that, that verse alone, when you're being tactful, yeah. that's what you should think about. Yeah, yeah. You know, you shouldn't have to, you know, it shouldn't be a response every time for something. Yeah. Just sit down and listen. Mm-hmm. Don't always try to fight something with something. Yep. And don't try to throw the scripture at somebody or beat them across the head with, you know, 
some verses. No. Yeah. Listen to what the person is telling you. Yeah. Listen to the heart of your spouse. That's what it's about. Listen so to what the heart you of your don't spouse. prioritize in your life that should be of importance to you becomes a problem to you. What you don't prioritize becomes a problem. That's why a lot of times in marriages their spouse and so mm -hmm. your spouse now seems like they're a problem in the marriage but they're not a problem the your priorities is the problem and so when you don't prioritize something that should be important to you it becomes a problem in your marriage um it's on them being the priority they have to take emotions out of it too yes i think well this is the thing i think that as women emotions a lot of times are wrapped up in everything that we have going on you do have to be uh able to step back from your emotions especially if you're just an overly emotional type of person you do have to be able to step back but i do think one thing that if it's something that is being consistently said in your marriage and consistently being brought up as an issue it's time to sit down and figure out how to resolve that issue yeah. so if priority is consistently being brought up in the marriage that this is an issue then it's time to address it it's time to sit down let's talk about it let's maybe get a routine to how we can begin to spend time together to how we can begin to work it out because nobody will continue to bring up something that's not an issue i'm not gonna keep talking about something that's resolved like something i don't have no problem with i don't have time to keep talking about it but yeah. something that keeps bothering me that keeps coming up that i have to keep fighting against that keeps that that is an issue i'm gonna continue to talk about it and a lot of times when you see women do that that means that they feel this way one point i definitely want everybody to think about you don't get to determine whether or not your spouse feels prioritized understand that that ain't your call to make so rama can't tell me that I should feel prioritized. I have to tell him that, babe, I feel like I'm a priority to you. Or I feel like you're not making me a priority. That comes from me. You don't have the right to tell your spouse how they feel. You have to listen to how they feel. Because you can't measure how they feel prioritized. That's why it's important to yeah. listen. But a lot of times what we do is when our spouse says, hey, I don't feel prioritized. Like Ronald said, we get on the defense. It's like... How you don't feel prioritized? I do this. I go to work every day. I pay the bills. I do this. We just went on a date three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. That's great, I guess, but this is what I need. And I think that's all mm -hmm. it comes down to, being able to continue to talk and being specific about what you need. Yeah, don't you just, you don't taught just, me that. Yeah, don't just be general and just throw yeah. something out there and then expect for your spouse to pick up on the other end. Yeah. You should have done, and then you leave it blank. Yeah. I should have done what? You said you wanted ice cream. I went and got vanilla ice cream. Mm -hmm. No, but you know I like chocolate and vanilla when it mixed in together with the sprinkles. <laughs> <laughs> but you just said you wanted ice cream. So I got ice cream. Yes. So yes. be specific on what you want. Yes. No, nah, give me the Napoleon ice cream. I want the strawberry, the uh, chocolate, and the vanilla. You know, the one that come from Mayfield. I want the Mayfield brand. Yes. You know, the court. That's what I want. I want all that. Yes. You know, tell exactly what you want. Yeah. Yeah, I want to put it this way, put it up in the air, and drop to the side. This is what I want. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you know? You gotta don't be specific. Yeah. yeah. So if you want, so this is this is what I'm saying. So if, if if priority is an issue and you have a spouse that has something else going on, you sit down, and you talk. Hey, I need to feel prioritized. So for me, I would say priority for me. Can we have a date night every week? Like, can this be the date night? If it can't be a specific day that's guaranteed, it has to be one of the seven days. And, you know, and you have to agree to those terms and make sure that you stay consistent with it. Mm -hmm. You have to be very specific about what you want. Being specific about hey. When we're out, I don't want no distractions. Like, when we're out, I want it to be me and you. No cell phones, no talking to random people. Like, it needs mm -hmm. to be us time. That makes me feel like a priority. Because you can spend time with somebody all day and still don't feel like a priority if their attention is not given to you. If you don't feel yeah. like you are getting their attention, that's important. So you got to understand what is priority to your spouse. Because what you may think is prioritizing them may not be what they need to feel prioritized. So I think that's that's important. So when you ignore prioritizing your spouse, you infect them with doubt, insecurity, frustration, anger, and jealousy, guys. When you ignore prioritizing your spouse, you infect them with doubt, security, frustration, anger, and jealousy. Yeah, you true. insert that. You give that to them. And so a lot of times people say, well, ah, he just acting insecure. He just acting so jealous. Mm, yeah, mm. There has to be something you probably yeah, made him feel true. that yeah. way. Mm hmm and anytime that I tell people all the time, I feel like such a priority in my husband's life. It never crosses my mind about him doing anything. I would be quite very shocked, you know, but 
I don't worry about things. Like I have no insecurities about where I stand in his life because he's placed me in that position very solid. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, he, he, he supports my position every day by his actions. And so a lot of times when you're seeing your spouse feeling doubtful, feeling insecure in your marriage, it, you can be the one to fix that. You can be the one to begin yes. to make them take those things away because you're the one that injected it by the way that you prioritize them. Anybody that feels like a priority in your life doesn't have to start doubting that unless, 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 unless they come already to the table with all these insecurities and all these problems. You do have people that have had things happen in relationships in the past mm -hmm. that they haven't let go and they come to the table very insecure, yeah. very low self-esteem, very jealous. You do have those people. But typically that's not most people. And so if you start to see something shift in your marriage and your spouse is starting to say, hey, I'm feeling a little insecure. Hey, I'm feeling like this. I'm feeling like that. Then you can begin to change the way they but feel. But you have to say that. Don't do. sit there with an attitude. Mm -hmm. And I have to figure out, you no. Know, and if I ask you, you know, okay, what's your problem? Yeah. Nothing. Now I should just know what the problem is. No. Mm -hmm. You tell that person, I, I kind of felt kind of way when uh, Keisha walked in and you looked at her and, you know, you started smiling at her. I felt some kind of way. I felt, yeah. you no, know, be straight. I felt insecure. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, because people she, don't like being vulnerable, though. That's the problem. Yeah. That's the problem. Nobody, it's so hard to be vulnerable in marriage, but marriage is the number one place that you're supposed to be vulnerable. Yeah. Like it's the place you're supposed to be naked and yeah. unashamed, like with each other. You're supposed to be able to say any and everything of how you feel, the deepest of your hearts, the deepest of your soul. You're supposed to be able to share that with your spouse in marriage. But so many times we've put up all these walls, all these barriers, and we're not able to communicate because we maybe communicated something before that we were vulnerable about and it was thrown in our face or it wasn't received right or it made us feel worse or, or your spouse made you feel worse about it. So a lot of times we start to pull up these walls. And when you mm -hmm. put up these walls, it prevents you from being true and honest with each other and from meeting the needs of each other. That's very true. Yeah. So I think we should go back to Genesis 2. Mm -hmm. Going back to the garden. We just be naked. Mm -hmm. Not really physically, but, you know, mentally and spiritually. We yeah. should be able to, you know, talk to your spouse not and not have to hide anything about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What's that question? What I said. No, it says, through my own experience, I'm learning defensiveness is a real issue for both sides in modern marriage. Today, we must learn how to stop being so defensive towards one another and ourselves, and we must start getting on the defense as one to defend our marriages. Yep, on all fronts, and remind ourselves the team of marriage is a us thing between you and your spouse. The U and S is silent and team, but it's very necessary. Absolutely. I think a lot of times that's just, that's just the world we live in. They teach you what? that if you're not getting what you need out of marriage, do you? Yeah, go get like, some will. Do you? They're what not going to give you what I you like, need. I like this. This is the best one. What you want to do another one, Will. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's unfortunately the what world you we live do, in. I'm going to try to work toward the making you feel what I need you to feel. Absolutely. Because you can do that. Absolutely. But the, per the thing is, we get so lazy yeah. that we don't even want to work for it. Yeah. We don't even want our, you know, try to make our spouse yeah. feel a certain way. Yep. And, you know, I'm, I'm a victim to that. Sometimes I get to a point where I get lazy and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go the extra mile. I don't mm -hmm. want to do the intimacy thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to just do me. Yeah. I don't want to have to feel like I got to go and stop and get flowers or send flowers or feel send arrangement. I don't want to do that. Yeah. But you have to make your spouse feel, you know, prioritize. She got to feel, be first mm -hmm. in everything. Partner communicate. Absolutely. You got to fight for your partner to communicate. They have to be priority. So we're talking about prioritize. So how to prioritize your spouse first, discuss ways together that would make each of you feel like you are getting the time and attention from each other. Communicate. The first thing you got to do in order to prioritize your spouse yeah. is talk about how and what you need to feel prioritized. What is it that you need? Me and Ronald, we tell people all the time, we do check-ins monthly and we just sit down and we talk about how the past month has been, you know, the good, the bad, the mm -hmm. ugly, the great. Sometimes we come to the table, it's been excellent. We don't have any things that need to be corrected or that can be approved on. Sometimes we come to the table and there are things that we absolutely need to work on, you know, and so I think if you use those times to really talk about what you need and really talk about what you want and you desire and you communicate um what how showing what would it take to 
to show you that you are a priority, a priority that gives your spouse the opportunity yeah. to then show up to the table with that. It's very um, unfair and unrealistic to assume that somebody will be able to meet your need without you expressing your need. That's part of what we talked about in our book. You got to be able to communicate effectively. Yes. You got to be able to express yourself. And so if you're going to put a demand on your spouse to do something that you desire, you got to be able to articulate what that is. You got to be able to say what that is in real time and like and and very um specific like Ronald yeah, said. Yeah, you have to. Be. You got to be able to be specific about it. But you got to be able to talk about it. That's the first step in prioritizing. Talk about what it's going to take. Talk about what you need. Talk about what you want. Talk about what's been working well, what hasn't been working well in the past, what new things you can try. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's that's where you start. So yeah, you put communication is key. Absolutely. Get a routine in place for spending time together. We uh, know so many married people that spend absolutely no time together. Yeah. They go back to just finding balance. And it's not that they are apart physically. They in the same house, same place, no time together. And it's very dangerous for a marriage for you not to spend time connecting intimately. Not sexually, I'm talking about intimacy. So if you're not spending time connecting intimately with your spouse, then you're now putting space between you guys that can let the enemy come in and work your mind and work their mind very deceitfully. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's very important to be strategic about spending time and getting into a routine with each other, of spending time together. One thing that we do that's naturally a routine for us now, we get in the bed, we talk like our night is always going to end with us talking ab in the bed about something, not you on, know, being on Facebook or not, you know, being on the phone. Absolutely. We actually talk, man. How was your day? You yep. know, if, if we didn't ask how your day was when Early. we first got mm -hmm. home, but you know, what's going on with you, man? You yeah. okay? You good? Yeah. You know? Because in, in men, you have to be consistent. Consistency is going to be the key yeah. when you're trying to communicate with women. Because a lot of times, they're emotional. Either they start crying or they're going to shut down when mm -hmm. something is wrong. Mm -hmm. So you have to continue to pull. You know, you sure you're okay? Yeah. They're going to hit you with the, okay, I'm good. But you know I'm good. <laughs> you know that Means I'm good. you better ask me some more questions. No, it's too I'm good. It's like, yeah, baby, I'm good. That means she's really good. Mm. But the one that, you know, kind of silent behind, like, I'm good and a pause... If the pause is like four or five seconds, something is wrong. If it go like this, I'm good. You see how it's um, pause, good. Um, I'm good. Mm. That means that something is wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's when you have to keep it. No, nah, baby, you sure? Mm -hmm. That's when you pull it close to you mm -hmm. and you start to talk. And eventually, with women, once you tap into their emotion, they think, you know, no, but what happened? I wanted to spend time with you on Thursday. And you said you had to work. You worked late. And I really, and I just told you to go ahead and do you because I was mad. No. Mm. Don't tell your husband to go ahead and do him and work yeah. if you really want to spend time mm -hmm. with him. Humble yourself and say, my Lord, I need you. My Lord. The lowercase L, though. <laughs> <laughs> I no, but you. you do gotta communicate when you need that time. You do. Like that's I think I've mastered that. Like if I'm if I'm missing you, I'm I'm straight saying I'm missing you. Just like that's you know, after the temper tantrum. Man. No, no, I, no, no. I've mastered that. Like even that, you yeah. worked you worked your business like twelve hours the last two days, and I said, look, babe, let's go grab something. I need a little time with you. Let's spend some time. We mm -hmm. went to a little burger joint and just hanged out and laughed and joked and hung out. And yeah. I saw. I think you gotta be strategic about how you do it because the thing about it. That I learned now, I used to do very early in our marriage. Yeah, have temper tantrums, but temper tantrums aren't going to give you the results you want yeah, all the time. Like, so you just got to be able to talk about it and say, hey, love, you know, I missed you. I really want to spend some time with you. Can we do something quick? It don't got to be nothing fancy. Let's just hang out. Let's catch up. Yeah. You know, that's all it comes down to. But if you get a routine in place, then you know that at least I know I'm going to see this person that this time. particular time. Well, yeah. I know we're going to meet up at and this you, time. And, I know typically we, and we come together this time. for the men who like, you know, who like to work like myself, you can then begin to schedule, you know, your job or your uh, time mm -hmm. around that time. Yeah. Now, if it comes a case where you cannot do that, then you as a man have to communicate to the wife. Look, babe, I can't do it uh, Tuesday. What we're going to do? Let's push this back to mm -hmm. Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday, you know what I'm saying, we'll be able to do something. Yeah. So. Yeah. You but gotta... it still boils down to communicating. You... Uh, like Nicole said, effectively communicate. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, you, it has to be effective. You know, you can't, you can't just make your uh, spouse 
your company. They have to be your companion. Those are two different things. And so your companion, you spend time with, you spend intimate time with, you talk to, you get to know. It's just not, hey, or bye, you know, what's going on with you? Like, even us, we talk about the kids, but the kids ain't the main thing we talk about. Mm, no, we talk about us. We talk about our relationship, our friendship. You know, what's going on with me? What I'm trying to do? What he's trying to do? You know, those kinds of things. So we stay connected intimately. Yeah. And I think that's what people have to be strategic about always doing. So you can't like just go about your day and think you can't, you don't have to reconnect. And, and, and especially if you're, you have the kind of career or business that takes you away from your house. Um, on end, a lot of times you yeah. have to be able to reconnect every time you get back together physically. You got, and I'm not just talking about on a sexual level. I'm talking about on an intimate level. You got to be able to reconnect because if you're not there physically a lot of the time, that's already some distance there. That's already some, some time that we're not connecting. So every time we come back together, we got to reconnect. And so it's important to do that. Also, um, give each other unlimited access to each other and limit access to the world and others. We were just talking about that earlier when we got on the scope. So give each other unlimited access and limit your access to the world. So many times we give the world, and the world includes family, friends, all these other people that exist mm -hmm. outside of your household. We give them more access to us than we give to our spouse. And that's very dangerous to do. Nobody should have more access to you than your spouse does. Your spouse should have unlimited access to you. Now, if you're in a business meeting and something going on, come on, we're not talking about like that. But we're talking about truly, if it's down to you scheduling your time and making them a priority if it's down to you going to hang with your homeboy you going to hang with your homegirl versus hanging with your spouse yeah. they should be the priority they That's should true. be the access of the person that has the access not everybody else and a lot of times in marriages you see that struggle because hobbies become the thing that's important you know uh careers mm -hmm. become the things that's important friends family and it's like hey you don't have any time for me what about me so nobody should have more access to you than your spouse everybody else should have limited access like i I don't know the hottest uh, phone service person that gives the best connection mm -hmm. out there right now, but that's how you should be with your spouse. And everybody else should be the poorest service that's out there. They should yeah. be getting the hit and miss kind of connection. When you're available, hey, it's jumping. You're available. And when you're not, look, Sean talking about Sprint, uh, Verizon, but if you're not, <laughs> then you know what I'm saying? You just not, you know? So, uh, that's the thing. Stop giving all these other people access to you and access to your time that your spouse needs. And that goes both ways for husbands and wife. Because a lot of times too, we can do things and we can, like we talked about earlier, we can feel like the religious things that we do are more important than what we need to do with our spouse. And so yeah. our spouses can get jealous and be like, well, you got time to do this. You got time to go serve at the bre prayer breakfast. You got time to do this, but then you don't have time to cater to your husband. And so we got to be very careful on what we do with our and, time. And just to speak on that for a minute, mm. my, my problem, my issue is how can you go serve at the prayer breakfast, mm. but you won't even put bacon on my plate and bring it to me? Mm. Very but true. But Pastor so-and-so, mm -hmm. all the... The deaconettes, mm. I guess that's what they call them. Deaconettes. <laughs> All the deaconettes or the, the lady of uh the lady of virtue of mm. Jesus Christ Latter day Saints Baptist Church, <laughs> what happened with them is they make sure, you know what I'm saying? Pastor, mm -hmm. you know, when pastor birthday come, no, I, I gotta put two hundred dollars mm -hmm. for Pastor. Mm -hmm. We said we all going in. And that's cool. Mm -hmm. Cause you should take care of the man of God. Yeah. But what are you doing for your husband? What are you doing yeah. at your But your husband is your man of God. You right. Girl, your you, husband is your man of you God. Right, you and see, right. see the problem with th that whole setup and that and, and and you gotta watch what what is always taught to you. That's why and, you gotta that's study. Right. Now that's for why the husband don't come to church. Absolutely, you that's gotta. True. That, like Dr. Cook just said, that's so very true. Because the thing about it is, a woman that serves her husband, whether he goes to church or not, serves her husband first. He will never have a problem with her going to serve wherever mm -hmm. she goes to serve. But there is no way that you truly can call yourself a woman of God if you do not serve your household first. If you do not cater to your husband first. I will yeah. never cook another man a meal before I make sure I cook you and you eat. That's just it. Yeah. I will never make sure I go out here and prepare this whole birthday party presentation, anything else, if I haven't done all that for you. You know, and mm -hmm. that's the thing. People don't understand that husbands are that covering. They are that man of God. Husbands are the first place that wives should be able to go. If I need to learn something out the word of God, I don't got to call my pastor. I go to you. Mm -hmm. And I said, babe, hey, 
Can you explain this to me in the Bible? I'll read yeah. this scripture and it kind of confusing. Can you can you address this for me? And if you don't know, you can say, look, babe, you know what? Let me study a little bit. Let me pray on it and I'll get back to you. And you do what you need to do to follow up on it. And you bring me back to work. But so many people don't do that. And we don't, we, we don't, we don't understand the order. So now we're going outside of our house. That's true. And that's Raising where we're getting fed at because we're not getting fed at home. So we think because we're not getting it fed at home. Now I got to just bless where I'm getting fed at instead of saying, no, you know what? My husband can feed me. Let me get him a matter of fact, let me put a demand on him to give me this food. I'm not gonna keep running off, and there's nothing wrong with going to church. I love being there, worshiping, being in the atmosphere. But the moment that that is the number one place as a married woman, if that is the number one place that you're going to get fed, to have a conversation, to bring an issue, is there, then you are already out of order. You need to be able to bring it to your husband. And a lot of women will say, Well, he ain't godly and he ain't doing this and he ain't doing that. You don't put the demand. You don't put the demand. Yeah, yeah, the moment true. that you begin to justify it and okay it and give it a pass, then that says, okay, I can keep, I can keep this position. I can keep doing this. Instead of you coming back like, no, you know what? Hey, I need you to look this up. Can, can you help me with this? That's all you got. Just, just, just communicate. The, yeah, just put the demand on yeah, it. Yeah, put the demand on it, but then I also put the respect on it. Because this is what we do. Because we put the you, demand, but we don't put the respect. You got to put the respect on my name. Yeah, so if I put the demand on you, to mm -hmm. feed me spiritually and, and be in your role as a husband, then what I'm going to do is give you the respect as a wife. I'm going to make sure well, you the, feel like well, that. The problem is most women, most American, I don't mean to do this, but most American women don't give their husband the respect that is supposed to be given. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Dr. Cook said, or you're beating them down. By reminding them that they are not like some other man. Absolutely. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody yes, wants to true. have that comparison to anybody else. Nobody wants that. Like, and, and, and I think somebody, we talked about it earlier and we talk about it in the book that we're writing, Think Your Marriage Strong. The thing that you focus on the most is what you maximize. So anytime that you focus on the negative things in your marriage more than you focus on the positive, you naturally maximize you, the negativity yeah, in your marriage. If you, if you, if you take your focus and place it on the small positive things, those things become magnified and they outweigh the negative things that happen. That's what it is about transforming your mind and focusing on certain things. You, we all have the power to change our our marriage and make our marriage what God intended it to be to live it out as a beautiful wonderful thing that makes us grow that makes us stronger that makes us have to sacrifice that makes us a better person that's what marriage is about like I look at myself 11 years ago before this marriage with Ronald to now I am a better Rachel because of my marriage to him he has made me a better woman like that's mm -hmm. that's just it and I have made him a better man period see and, and that's the thing I just like the way that sounds I made her a better woman this is what I do. <laughs> you know, God made, he created oh, us. Oh, okay, okay. I'll just God created see how you us. Gonna, like, slide him in there. God <laughs> created us. But we as men, we make our women better. Yeah. We yeah. make them better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They are nothing without us. Matter of fact, what? God decided to pull them from our real. This Lose a full here. body. This man here. And so. Really bad. <laughs> No, but it, no, but that you know that kind of boosts my ego a little bit. Like my wife said, "Hey, this man made me better. You I did. feel good." So, women, that's what you should do. Go mm -hmm. tell your husband, say, "Look, baby, look. You know what? You make me better." Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Watch his reaction. Watch yeah. his reaction. Yeah. You make me better. Yeah. You have made me a better person mm -hmm. because of you. You have made me better. See, and this is the thing. People like to think that because if you go through something in your marriage, let's say you have a you have a a a, a, a hard a trying marriage, if you focus on just the trials alone, you will never be able to pull the strength out of it. So everything when you have a relationship with God, we understand that everything that we go through has a purpose and has a purpose to build us to make us better. So it, it, God doesn't allow things to happen in our life to make us worse. He allows it to make us better. So even if you have a challenging marriage, the challenging marriage can make you better. A lot of times what we do is we don't want to get better. We want to get bitter. And so we get bitter about the situation and we don't allow ourselves to get better. And then we don't tell our spouse like, hey, you know what? Me and you going through that situation, it was a tough situation. I didn't like it. Matter of mm -hmm. fact, I despised it. Yeah. But it made me a better person. It made me a better communicator. It made me a better listener. It made me 
um, stronger. It made me tougher. It made me um, be able to endure more. You got to look at the positive yeah. out of everything, no matter what you go through. Because when you don't, you allow those things to become um, uh, burdens to you. And you carry them around, dragging them with you, holding and weighing you down. Yeah, and instead of you taking them and making them building blocks and making you tougher and stronger. Yeah, make them build a block. That was good. But just... Just to uh, piggyback what you were just saying. That's why you have so many people, male and female, that walk around looking mad all the mm -hmm. time. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm, you mad? Yeah. Already? Yeah. At 730? Yeah. Just, oh, so you just look like this. Mm-hmm. Like mm -hmm. the song said, you just woke up like this. <laughs> yeah, you just woke up mad. You, you mad every day? Yes. There's no way possible that you could be mad every day. Yep. You cannot be mad every day. You can't. I don't even think the devil be mad every day. Mm -hmm. Now, come mm -hmm. on, man. No. To be mad every day is to not have a true relationship with God. There is no, God yeah. just gives you a certain type of a peace, joy. a certain type of joy that when you connect with him, you yes. can get it like period. And so if you're not getting that every day, then there's a issue in the connection. Well, I think this is the problem because the same people who call themselves Christian are the mm -hmm. same people who walk around and be mad every day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, now said. then how can you now tell me that I need to go to your church or believe in the God that you serve mm -hmm. when I see you? You mm. man, you miserable. Yeah, you're not a good representation. I don't see no characteristics of Christ in you. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're supposed, to, you're supposed to believe in this God, go to church and and worship and pray about this God. Now, I ain't saying you're gonna be uh, good every day, exactly. But you should be uh, pushing out some kind of positive vibe, absolutely. When you come around, yeah, your vibe should be you know changing the atmosphere yeah. when you come around because people shouldn't see you; they should see the God in you. Absolutely, you should have to tell you me, can't look like the word. You can't the tell world. me you a Christian. You don't have to tell me that. I can look that. at you. And our spirit will connect. And I can say, man, yep. it's something about that person, man. It's, I can see the God in this. Yeah, in that you can person. feel it. But if you come around and you mad for no reason, yeah. that ain't God. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. It's well, not. I guess it could be God as the lowercase g. Because oh, yeah. a lot of people don't understand right. that the lowercase g is God's. Mm -hmm. Like the worshiping God. Like mm -hmm. the small God. The idolatry stuff. We idolatry yeah, God. The stuff we so, idolize. So who are you really worshiping? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what you got to ask yourself. Are you really a Christian that you say you are? Kimberly said, can't look like I've been baptized in pickle juice. Right. <laughs> are you the Ciroc one? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, so, it, yeah, that's, and, and, and I think that's what comes on, down. Hold on, you, you, Let me talk. See, this is what I be talking about. This ain't prioritizing. I'm trying to get my point across and she just cut me off. You know what? I apologize, my king, for cutting you off. Speak freely. I can't even say that. <laughs> You know what? Matter of fact, this scope is literally now over. <laughs> but if people, if most people would operate in that way, you would kill most arguments in a marriage. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it's humility. At the end of it, you can kill every situation in a marriage with humility. Period. Yeah, you can. You but can. when emotions flare and you in it, it's very hard to pull back and say, "Let me dig deep and get my Christ like on." You know, when you in your feelings. No, you throw Christ like out the window. Yeah, it's, it's, let somebody you know, make you mad. Yeah. All that you learned on Sunday and Tuesday at Bible study. Oh, that's out the window. I mean, literally all hell will break loose. Yes, 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 yes. It's yes, no yes. more, you know, God is my keeper. He is my rock. Yeah. You just literally just kick that rock. You trying to throw the rock at somebody. Yeah. So God is no longer your rock. Mm. So you have to continue to stay in the characteristics Absolutely. of Christ. When you say you're a Christian, now we all fall short, man. We don't keep using that for no excuse either. Mm -hmm. You cut somebody out tomorrow. Well, we, we all, all fall, fall short. short of the glory. That, <laughs> that is a good one. We not perfect. Nobody. I mean, you perfect. always got you. They always got an excuse, and I've done it too. You know, you always justify <laughs> your uh your uh your your time that you flipped out and lost your uh Christianity. You always justify it, but no, what God intends for us to do is to come yeah. back, step back, and reevaluate ourselves and say, how could I have handled that differently? I'm absolutely out of order. And I could have handled that better. But and this is the good thing. About it when you have when you truly have God mm -hmm. inside of you and you wrong someone mm -hmm. and you go away, God will convict you. So mm -hmm. this is where yep. the real Christian comes out to show. Mm -hmm. When you can come back and say, you know what, man, I was sorry. I apologize. Mm -hmm. That's when you see the real characteristics of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. You absolutely. see, before even before we, they was even talking about the whole Christian thing, that's where it came from. Yeah. Because they man, these folks are Christ like. Mm -hmm. And we say Christian, but I like to call it Christian. Yeah. Because they show Christ-like characteristics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, we, 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 we're going to get ready and cut this off short. We're not going to be on too much longer. Oh, you know? let's do, okay, so I ain't finished all of them, but let's get to the poisons then. So no, poisons. My, my wife be having like 14... 
hundred notes. I do not. And she guys. wanna go through every point. I can go through I... all my points in like fifteen minutes. So what you saying? Go ahead, do you. Thank you. If y'all know that she gave me that look. <laughs> Have you ever your wife ever gave you that I got you look? <laughs> and so that's the look she just gave me. That's why I didn't feel bad. But on the series, though, I'm gonna let her go and get her point. No, but I just wanna talk about poisons to, pri to, to prioritize in your marriage. So some things that will poison you prioritizing your spouse is intentions. That's number one. Um intentions are not actions. Intentions are wonderful, great. But they don't happen. Like, so you intending to do something is nothing to me. It doesn't make me feel like a priority. You intending to take me on a date. You intending to spend some time with me. You intending to do that. That is nothing. So intentions are killers to priorities. You got to be about actions. You got to actually do what you intend to do. You got to be able to do it. Selfishness. Selfishness is a killer to prioritizing your spouse. If you are selfish, you will never prioritize your spouse because it will always Always be about you, what you want, um, what comes first to you, what is priority to you. And um, in prioritizing somebody else, you have to be selfless. You have to be an unselfish type of person. You got to be willing to cut back something that you want to do to meet the needs of your spouse. Good things out of priority are priority killers. Good things out of priorities. So let's yeah. say like doing something for uh your family or doing something that is in essence a good thing but takes you away from your spouse and meeting the need of your spouse at that time. That can be good things out of priority. Yeah, and so you got to make sure that you still prioritize your uh spouse. Options mask as obligations, guys. A lot of times we like to say that we're obligated to do something and when in essence it's an option like stop masking these options as obligations you're not obligated you are obligated to your spouse you are obligated to meet the needs of your spouse you are obligated to take care of your spouse to love your spouse to be there for your spouse so that is your number one obligation outside of all the other things and we're not talking about like if you got a work or you got other things going on but we're talking about the things that you truly have a choice in doing the things that you truly can say no to that are optional yeah. that that you're not demanded to do mm -hmm. you know or required to do for a job or anything so you got to make sure you watch those and valuing things that don't belong to you is a priority killer like valuing other people's spouses focusing on other people yeah, things that's crazy that stuff takes you away from prioritizing what you have you got to make sure you stay focused on your marriage what you have and what you're building together because what's yours is yours don't be looking at nobody else mm-hmm yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And I think anytime that you take the time to make your spouse feel like they are number one in your life, yeah, you will never hear them complain about it. Most times they will come and tell you how great a job you do in prioritizing them. And so we all can get distracted. We're human. We all can get bogged down with different stuff going on. We were just talking about the demands of raising kids, job, business. You know, anything can happen that can take us away from each other. And we got to try to regroup and connect and come back together so that we don't get disconnected. And a lot of times, this is another thing that um, definitely, guys, if you're out there and you're dating, you're spending time together, uh, when you connect, disconnect from technology. Yeah, you have to do that. That is I a big problem. I absolutely hate going out and seeing couples on a date. Like on a date. I even hate going out with friends and we chilling, talking, and you can't get off of social media for like two hours. Like, yeah, that's we true. don't need to be hanging out. If it got that much of your attention, you need to just stay at home and stay on your phone. Like, for real. Because so many people, that's why we don't feel connected in our marriages and with each other. You got to be able to give your attention, your full, total attention. Like, period. But now so many couples are doing that. They're out mm -hmm. and everybody's in their phone. Like and I'm like, well, what, how y'all really connecting? Yeah, that's true. And what's really going on with the two of you? So you got to well, be. I think a lot of people don't know how to communicate anymore. They'll mm -hmm. be downstairs and texting their spouse. So you going to the store? Yeah. So we got to get back to to the old school communication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you important. You know, telling your spouse how much you how much you mean to them. Mm -hmm. Just just because not wanting anything behind it. Mm -hmm. Like you know, I truly love you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't want nothing. Mm-hmm. Except for the night. Yep. <laughs> no, like literally. No, no, I'm just joking. But no, uh, <laughs> no, but you have to. You have to do that. Yeah. Um, I want to give a shout out to uh, Alex, who is watching the night. His wife just gave him a shout out. 
So, man, <laughs> we pray that you keep watching. And we're going to pray that God... Hey, Alex. We're going to pray that God bless you tonight, Alex, because I believe a blessing is coming your way. <laughs> 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 and so, man, look, we greatly appreciate each and every one for joining us tonight, like we stated before. For those of you who was not on the scope earlier, yeah. we will not be doing Married by God every Monday. Yeah. We will be Sorry, doing guys. Married by God every other Monday, mm -hmm. Monday, mm -hmm. because we got some prioritizing to do for Monday. Yeah, we're gonna be doing our own MBG on Monday. No, I mean like studying, trying to get ready for the next month. I oh mean for God. the next week. No, but so, yeah, we gotta scale back a little bit. We're gonna just scale back, man. We got a lot going mm -hmm. on, and so we thank you all for joining us, man. We're so excited about what God is not only doing in our life, but in the lives of people who join us on MBG. Yeah. Because a lot of time, man, we don't share it a lot, but we'll start to share it. A lot of times behind the scenes, we get a lot of uh, testimonial yeah. stuff about how MBG has blessed their marriage just yeah. by watching this on Monday. We yeah. also have a couple who do this for a date night. Yeah. They take our topic, listen to it, yeah. and then after that, they kind of you know elaborate on what we have mm -hmm. a conversation about what we talked about on tonight. Mm -hmm. And so that's always a good feeling to know that we are blessed to be a blessing to somebody else. Yeah. And those, and for those of you um, who may not know or who may know or may be thinking, our marriage is not perfect by far. We have the same issues, the trials and tribulation that everybody else has. Just because we are married by God, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that we are excluded from, you know, arguments or situations yeah. that happen that, you know, happen in a marriage. Yeah. Cause no. Ronald got a lot of growing to do. I mean, he got to catch up cause I'm pretty perfect, but I mean, if you just catch up, we'll be she all right. Is. I mean, she, she perfect. That's she, <laughs> which is you perfect. Or you almost perfect? I said pretty perfect. Okay. Let's call her Mary Madeline. <laughs> no, she did almost perfect one. I was just messing with you. This is Jesus sister. <laughs> are you Jesus niece or are you Jesus sister? <laughs> with you and but so, no you are absolutely right it is it is by no means perfect no um and i tell people all the time it's very hard to do this and go through stuff in your marriage but let me tell you it's not fake this is who we are yeah if you see us outside of this scope yeah or you see us out yeah it's us this is what you get like yeah. this is not a show that we putting on yeah. for faith. No, we're not going to do that. I don't yeah. have enough time for my schedule to do that, yeah. to be trying to put on. Now, it is funny when we be done had an argument and then we got to come and get on the scope. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and then somebody be like, y'all okay today? Ronda kind of quiet. I still go in, guys. I still give it my all. But y'all done called Ronda out a couple times. He had to get his life together. No, because I don't know how to hide it. <laughs> When I'm mad, I don't know how to hide it. I don't, I don't play the fake game. I don't play the in-between game. That's just who I am. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for all the nice comments. I mean, we appreciate it. We definitely will jump on as much as we can, but definitely committed to the every other week just because our boys are getting older. They're doing all these sports stuff now. We have businesses that are taking off a little bit, and we just got so much going on. So, But we love coming on MBG and talking marriage talk, talking relationship talk, because mm -hmm. just as much as it um, helps you guys to talk with us, it helps us it's to also, talk with yeah, you guys, yeah. too. It's very it's like refreshing. therapy for us. Yeah, absolutely. You know? It's very refreshing for us to know that, you know, to normalize a lot of the things that we all just go through in marriages, and I think this is what we miss so much now in the world, having that peace. And, and now that you say that, I think it's very important, and I think this is the, the, the great part about Married by God is because we, we try to normalize marriages mm -hmm. you know because and the people a lot of people you know wonder why i talk about like the sex topic so much mm. to normalize it 99.9 mm -hmm. point i mean 99 you see how he making up 99 99.9 yeah. <laughs> men are all sexually messed up <laughs> but we can't verbalize it most of the time for the women because like, mm. that's all you think about. No, mm. that's ain't. I, I'm wired that way. Mm. That's why when your husband see you, he can he can feel a certain type of way because that is the way that he is wired. And he should. And he should desire you. Mm -hmm. Like you know, you, your husband should desire you just like Eve desired taking that apple from the tree. Mm. God told her, "Say, look, you eat this, you gonna die." She wouldn't have take kill me. <laughs> Kill me. That's how she your husband should be. That's how like, your husband. Like, <laughs> I'm going to die for this. True. To get a taste of this right here. You said. <laughs> so you tell me I'm going to die if I touch her? <laughs> Lord, forgive me. Let me. <laughs> but that is the way, you know, that's the way you should desire 
your husband. That's how your Give husband should be. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because one thing I think that um is 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 dangerous that people do with that whole piece about it, you gotta find balance in it, is that a lot of times wives can kill their husband's desire by always rejecting them. Hold and, on, what does it say? It say you guys should write a book about real marriage. I love Hey, hey Morgan. Morgan, we got some news for you. <laughs> we already have one book out. Now we're yeah. working on the second book. Mm -hmm. And this is what the second book is all about. Yeah, we do have a, a book out called Married by God, God's Blueprint to a Successful Marriage. It's on a Amazon. Um, Morgan, It might out be there. sold out on... Uh, I have uh, to check. Yeah, just check. But... Um, it is on Amazon, and you can um, get it. And we're also coming out with the book called "Think Your Marriage Strong." Think it strong. Think it strong, guys. It's just gonna—it's gonna be a so wonderful. So, do you think book. that your marriage is strong? Yeah. Because as a man, think it so. Is he? As, as he, he thinks in his heart. So, if you think your marriage is strong, guess mm -hmm. what? Your marriage is strong. If yeah. you think you are successful, guess what? You would be successful mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, it comes down to you believing yeah. within your heart. Yeah. That's why he said, confess with your mouth, mm -hmm. say that I am successful, mm -hmm. say that I have a blessed marriage, mm -hmm. believe in your heart. So after you say it, you must believe it. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we say things, but mm -hmm. we truly don't believe we it. We don't believe we'll it. We'll say, man, I'm going to be a millionaire. I want to buy uh, Wells Fargo. Man, you don't believe that. Mm hmm but if I tell you, you're going to buy some chips, you believe because you're going to pull mm -hmm. out your dollar and say, look, I got a dollar. I can buy two bags of chips. Yep. You can do that. But at the same time, that's the same mentality that yeah. you have to have in your marriage. Yeah. You have to believe that this marriage is going to work. It's no such thing as divorce. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you did wrong. We're going to work through this. You have to say it. Mm -hmm. You have to believe it in your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Don't just say it. And faith without works is dead. That's basically what he's trying to tell mm -hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Yep. If you don't believe it and don't work for it, yep. you have done nothing. Yep. So you just can't say I'm going to be successful mm -hmm. and not work. Mm -hmm. You cannot say you want a job mm -hmm. and then sit at home and don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Faith is an action word. Love is an action word. Yep. It requires you to do something. Absolutely. And so likewise in your marriage, when you want your marriage to work, you have to work for it. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's going to be some stumbling blocks. Yes, there's going to be some things that are going to come up. But you have to continue to push, That's it. push, push, work hard, believe in God, have faith. Yeah. You have to do all those things because all those things is a great recipe for uh, uh, a successful marriage. Yeah. You know, it's just like I would tell somebody, like cooking an egg. Mm. When you just eat an egg, an egg is nasty. If you just eat cake powder by itself, it is nasty. Mm -hmm. If you drink a cup of oil, it is nasty. <laughs> now, if you drink milk, it may taste good. Mm -hmm. But when you take all those ingredients, mm -hmm. mix them up, you take the powder, mm -hmm. you take the eggs, you take the oil, and mm -hmm. you take the milk, and you mix it up to bake a cake and put it in the stove. Mm -hmm. It is a great product. Now, watch what I just told you. You mix all those ingredients up mm -hmm. and you put it up under heat. Mm -hmm. That those are the trials of the tribulation and the stuff that we go through as a married couple. But mm -hmm. when it come out, mm -hmm. it's the best cake you can ever eat. Ever have. Mm -hmm. you Absolutely. That? So when you put it in there and you put it back out, it's the best cake you can ever eat. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Absolutely. So you have to be willing to mix those great ingredients up. Yeah. Uh, one more scenario. I mean, one more thing I want to give you guys. Now, it's just like your marriage is just like, have you seen those bottles of... Uh, Drench like the dressing, mm -hmm. the thousand dollar dressing, and you have mm -hmm. all the flavors at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And it said, for the best flavor, mm -hmm. shake it, shake well, shake well. <laughs> so sometimes your marriage has to be shaken up a little bit, yeah, to get all that you know, your attitude, the way you talk to him, that intimacy, yeah. that love language mm -hmm. has to be shaken up mm -hmm. to have a great, successful marriage that yeah. tastes good. I love it, I love it. And so, next, of course, you next do. time, of we... course, you do, yeah, I know. <laughs> now, I'm just joking, y'all, I'm just joking, I ain't that type of person. <laughs> So next time we come on, guys, we're going to be talking about thinking your marriage strong. We're actually doing a conference for those guys who just joined us. We're in Atlanta. And if you can join us in Atlanta, we would love to see you in September. But we are doing our second conference this year called Think It Strong. And um, we're going to be talking about uh, the power of your thoughts. And um, next week or week after next when we jump on, we're going to be talking about the four places that thoughts come from. And I just want to hit you guys with them real quick because when you know where your thoughts are generated from, um, then you can be very strategic about guarding your heart and guarding your mind and where those things come from. And so thoughts come from four places. They come from God. They come from the enemy. They come from others and they come from ourselves. They come from what we tell ourselves. And so the only thoughts that don't have to be filtered or protected are godly thoughts because godly thoughts will always yeah. add value to you.
Godly thoughts will always grow you. Godly thoughts will always uplift you. Godly thoughts will always encourage you. Godly thoughts will always add value to your life. And so you don't have to be a gatekeeper to godly thoughts. You can just let those drop on into your heart, your mind, your spirit, and, and let it go ahead and transform and take place. Then you have thoughts from the enemy. Those thoughts are always toxic, always detrimental to your well-being, will always go against your purpose, your future. They will always speak death into your life. That's true. Those are demonic, the enemy thoughts. Those thoughts come from that place. Then you have thoughts that come from others, things people tell you about yourself. Um, you got to filter those thoughts. Those thoughts absolutely have to be filtered. But the thoughts from the enemy, you don't take those at all. Those have to be sized up right then, tossed out. They don't even have to be filtered. You got to know those thoughts. You got to know when they come, you got to go ahead and dismiss them and throw them out. Mm -hmm, but thoughts mm -hmm. that come from others and thoughts that come from ourselves, we have to filter. We have to filter. You got to see what's good, what's going to help, and you got to see what's bad, what's going to hurt. And those are the four places that we get the thoughts that rule our lives and the thoughts that kind of work in our marriages. And you got to be careful about all of those things except for godly thoughts. The goal is to feed yourself more godly thoughts than any other thoughts that you do in your marriage. When you feed yourself more godly thoughts than any of the other thoughts that come our way, you will naturally begin to think your marriage strong. You will naturally begin to see your marriage in a different light, in a different way. You will be able to pull on God's strength and God's energy to be able to transform your marriage by the way that you think and the way that you see your marriage. Because as a man thinks it, thinks in his heart, so is he. And so when you begin to place in your heart that my marriage is great, my marriage is good, even if it's not manifested in your life right now, the fact that it's in your spirit, that it's in your heart, that it's in your mind, you will begin to speak those things that are not as though they were and they'll begin to exist in your life. That's what this book is all about. Just really transforming marriages, transforming your marriage and transforming your life because we have the power to do that as children of God. We, ha we have the power to transform our situations and a lot of times we just don't pull on that strength we don't know how to do it we don't know what affects our lives we're not being gatekeepers of our heart the word of god says guard your heart it's a reason you have to guard your heart mm -hmm. because out of the heart flows the issues right mm -hmm. so if if in my heart are issues and things begin to get planted into my heart and they're gonna grow and fester in my life then I gotta make sure that I'm guarding my heart to only receive the good seeds that's what you gotta do so you gotta guard your heart to only receive the good seeds of marriage the things that will be able to strengthen your marriage the things that be able to help your marriage grow that will support your marriage that will encourage your marriage that's what Think It Strong is all about that's what the conference is gonna be all about and we're gonna have a wonderful wonderful time at the marriage conference we got some great speakers coming out with us this time again and so we can't wait to see you guys uh the date i think somebody asked i don't have the exact date yet we're trying to work on the location but it's going to be september 2017 and i'm hoping to release the date and the tickets next week and so you guys who follow the mbg page just be on the lookout for that we're going to go ahead and be posting um the conference and how you can get conference tickets and join us at the conference. So we would love to see you guys. We had a great time for those that joined us last year and we're hoping that you guys come out this year too. Yes, it will be bigger. And I just want to give a shout out to my wife. She had done a great job. Mm -hmm. She took us to church at the end and she closing us out. I was just waiting for her to close us out in prayer and the music started playing. I'm about to scream. I just, Glory. I just drop that i just had to drop yeah. that where god is yeah this, you really dropped book, that heat you dropped that this heat. book is really i mean it has taken everything everything it's everything anointed. everything yeah it's truly god and it's none of us and so definitely just hopefully it will do exactly what god not not even hopefully i know that it will do exactly what god created it to do and got what god spoke it to do and so we're just excited about um it being released and getting it together and doing this conference and building marriages and supporting the marriages for those who are new to the page welcome to the family we love our mbg family thank you guys for always supporting us um for always encouraging us continue to pray for us as we pray for you guys because we need prayer um just as much to get on here and do this um as often as we do it and so we love you guys um pray for marriages out there if you see somebody struggling in their marriage encourage them support them pray for them be there for them because this is the marriage family and it's all about God getting the glory out of our marriages. Our marriages are not about us, but they yeah. are for the glory of God. And when you live your marriage that way, God would always, always, 
always, always, always show up and show out in your marriage. That's all I got, guys. Love you guys. You done? I thought one of them old church songs was to come on. I will trust. trust. <laughs> <laughs> now, we don't want the, you don't know, have Christian people mad. No, we're not joking. Like, we dead serious, though. Like, we... We, we, you know, we love the Lord as well. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And I see Sister Kimberly over there. She over there shouting right now. <laughs> she praising the Lord right now. Absolutely, man. We love you guys. Y'all have a blessed night, and we will see you guys next time. Have a great one.